glad that you made it tonight. Um, I have a lot of announcements. First off, we have the baby bottles for Redeeming Life that are due on May 6th. On May 6th, which is a Saturday, um, we do have the Walk for Life uh, down at uh, North Shore Park. Check in at 8 a.m., 9 a.m. is the walk. Afterwards, we come back here for a prayer service and a brunch. Confirmation is Sunday the 7th. Uh, there's a, in the morning, a baccalaureate prayer service at, for, um, on the 7th, the same day, at 6 p.m. that evening for graduating high school students. Um, we also start Monday and Tuesday of next week for the school accreditation is next week. Just to let everybody know that. Um, we also have the uh, school musical over at Northeast High School on the uh, 11th and 12th. The 11th is the second to fourth graders at 7.30. And on the 12th are the preschool two to first grade at 7.30 on the 12th at Northeast High School. There's a blood drive on the 14th this month, uh, be starting between services and going to after the service. And I just want to make one more comment, and that is Wednesday nights at 6.30, we do we, what we call Basic Lutheran Christianity. That is the new member class. So if you're look, anybody's looking to be a new member, you need to take that course, okay? All right, so with that, Please rise as we start our service today. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake, forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.
Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, merciful Father, since you have awakened from death the shepherd of your sheep, grant us your Holy Spirit that when we hear the voice of our shepherd, we may know him who calls us each by name and follow where he leads. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. The readings for the fourth Sunday of Easter. The first reading comes out of the book of Acts. <clears throat> they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship to the breaking of the bread and prayers. And on came upon every soul. And many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. And all who believed were together and had all things in common. And they were selling the possessions and belongings and distributing the proceeds to all as any had need. And day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, they received their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having favor with all people. And the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle reading comes out of First Peter. This is a gracious thing, when mindful of God, one endures sorrows while suffering unjustly. For what credit is it if, when you sin and are beaten for it, you endure? But if when you do good and suffer for it, you endure, this is a gracious thing in the sight of God. For to, you, for to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example, so that you might follow in his steps. He committed no sin, neither was deceit found in his mouth. When he was reviled, he did not revile in return. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but continue entrusting himself to him who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in the body on the tree, that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed, for you were straying like a sheep but have now returned to the shepherd and the overseer of your souls. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 10th chapter. Jesus said, Truly, truly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs in by another way, that man is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the gatekeeper opens. The sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. A stranger they will not follow, but they will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of strangers. This figure of speech Jesus used with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So Jesus again said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. This is the gospel of the Lord.
Grace and mercy to you from God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. Today I'll be preaching on the 23rd Psalm. And it goes like this. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his namesake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. That is actually part of the lectionary for this, this week. Um, I chose it, uh, well, you'll see at the end. Today I'm going to start talking about feelings. All right, guys, you don't get to run out of here right now, okay? It's not going to be that bad, okay? All right? I put some examples into categories. And you know I like bullet lists, so I'm gonna, I have some bullet lists here, so bear with me on these. The first category that I put together is physical feeling, and here's a few examples. Weak or weakness, tired, sleepy, warm, cold, uncomfortable, restless, or relaxed. And the next category is cognitive feeling. Again, some examples. Optimistic, thoughtful. Annoyed, curious, I bet you're curious where I'm going with this. <laughs> um, the next category is emotional feeling. Again, some examples. Sad, happy, grieved, brokenhearted, anger, furious, calm, afraid. I'll come back to this one. The final category is spiritual feeling, and these are the examples. Ashamed, guilty, helpless, defeated, grateful, peaceful, secure, confident, joyful. And of course, we can pair the opposites, right? Happy and sad, furious and calm, restless and relaxed. And we can also have feelings that lead to other feelings. An example, I said I was coming back to it, here it is, fear. Fear can lead to frustration, anger, or despair. Let me explain. When I was young in elementary school, and yes, I can still remember some of that, I was putting together a science project, and it was due the next day, and I was rushing to get it all put together. And without it, I would receive probably a pretty bad grade, and I feared this. Well, it was not going together very well. 
I was getting increasingly frustrated. I got so frustrated, I got angry and threw everything on the floor and crossed my arms and sat down in despair. So fear of a bad grade led to frustration, then anger and despair. Fear itself, though, is a normal feeling, neither good or bad. It depends on our rational action when we feel it. I should have asked for more help when I started to feel this frustration, when my mother evidently came by seeing my frustration and helped me finish the project. But I should have asked for help much earlier, before I got angry. So what do you fear? Well, when I was even younger, and the lights were out, and I was in bed, I used to imagine maybe a monster under my bed or a monster in a closet. My dad would come in and show me that there was nothing to fear. He would turn the lights on and show me that nothing in the closet, nothing under the bed. And I was grateful that he helped me because then I could get to sleep with confidence. And then here's a list of some things and that you and I might be afraid of. Fear of losing our material possessions, our house, our car, maybe our tools or our clothing. Fear of losing the means of making a living, a job, losing our job. Fear of looking bad in front of other people or, or a loss of dignity. Fear of physical harm or even death. And the greatest fear of them all, fear of eternal damnation. So now this brings me to my discussion of the 23rd Psalm. And there's a reason this is likely the most popular Psalm, and that is because it has the capacity to calm all of our fears. The Psalm is about Jesus as our shepherd. And as our shepherd, he cares for us. We have food to eat and water to drink, and that's what we need to live. That's where the green pastures and the still water. And Jesus keeps us safe from evil and spiritual and earthly enemies that are all around us all the time. He's restored us to righteousness through the waters of baptism where he anointed us with the Holy Spirit. And he strengthens and restores our faith through his body and blood and Holy Communion. All of this so that we may live a life of goodness and mercy. So I'm going to bring up another feeling word, kind of. I didn't have it on the list earlier. I was saving it. Trust. Now, we tr when we trust somebody, this person has provided a, a good track record towards us, haven't they? And you and I trust our Lord Jesus Christ. He's had a perfect track left record for you and I. We can trust our Lord Jesus. Our Father in Heaven promised to save the world from corruption and sin. He promised and gave His only Son as our Savior and Redeemer. Jesus left Heaven obedient to His Father. He lived here on earth among us as a human without sin. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He was born Son of God and Son of Man. He saw our sinful condition. And out of love for you and me, he died on the cross for our sins. He was raised on Easter morning, and he lives. He has ascended into heaven as the right hand of the Father. And he's our advocate right there. And he lives to all eternity. What a track record of love. Now, the Greeks, they had a word for this type of love, and they call it agape love, unconditional love, undeserved love. And our shepherd, Jesus, keeps us and he protects us. And here's what he himself said. My sheep hear my voice and I know them. They follow me. And I give them eternal life and they will never perish. And no one will snatch them out of my hand. What a great statement. and What a great feeling to know that the Lord is not going to let anybody take us out of his hand. So we can trust Jesus. He promised that our, our sin would be forgiven and that we would have eternal life. And this is true. And because of what Jesus has done, 
and continues to do. Surely we have goodness and mercy all the days of our life. Now I'm going to finish with the story. It's about uh, my life quite a few years ago. Again, I'm going way back. I must have been thinking about this a lot. And I, brought, I was brought up in an LCMS church, and it had a school not unlike Grace Lutheran. And my past church was uh, St. Paul Lutheran Church and School in Royal Oak, Michigan. And just like here at Grace, we had chapel on Wednesday morning, every Wednesday morning. All the grades from kindergarten all the way through eighth grade were always present. One time, when I was in fourth grade, Pastor Bartz was speaking about this very same psalm, number 23. And I remember how safe I felt hearing this song, and it made me feel, and still does today, feel safe and secure. And I remember thinking, why would anyone not want to be exactly where I am sitting, or where you're sitting today, or where I'm standing? And the last verse struck my heart. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Peace of the Lord which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Please rise as we join together, uh, confessing our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. Make man of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ. Begotten the Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of earth, begotten not me, being of one thing with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, who was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophet. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated for the prayers of the church. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Holy Father, by the work of your Spirit, through the means of grace, you daily add to the number of believers. Grant your people courageous hearts and bold tongues to proclaim your truth, trusting that you will gather more in keeping with your gracious will, Lord, in your mercy. Shepherd of Israel, you have clothed us with Christ's righteousness and taught us to love all that is good, beautiful, and true. Bless all artists and artisans, composers and musicians, and craftsmen and writers, that they may employ all their skills for your glory and in service to the gospel, and testify to your saving death and resurrection. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, you hold in your hands all the might of man, and you hold accountable those who would govern your people. Grant to us good government and leaders who will honor your purpose, protect your people, serve the cause of justice, and defend our liberty. Lord, in your mercy. Merciful shepherd, your wounds are our healing and your voice our certainty. Hear us on behalf of those who suffer in body or mind, who grieve or to whom death draws near. 
Steve, Joan, Jennifer, Jackie, Heather, Lisa, Paul, Navitha, Carl, Mika, Joyce, Reggie, Dennis, Joanne, Jean, Paul, Barbara, Tim, Larry, Laura, Amy, Kevin, Phyllis, Tom, Elsie, Paul, MJ, Bob, Tom, Ginger, Susan, Ed, Keith, Pat, Anita, Donna, Steve, Gary, Beverly, Linda, Joyce, and Gary. And Lord, be with uh, us and our compromise, our compromise this week and, and our, during our walk for life in your name. And uh, guide us through the accreditation, reaccreditation process this coming week. Grant all we've who we've prayed for healing in accordance to your will. Grace to sustain them in trouble and to the sure hope of everlasting life. Abide also with the unemployed and the distraught. Return them to health and livelihood, Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, in the wake of your son's resurrection, your people devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayers. Unite your people in the one true faith and grant penitent hearts to all who come to receive the sacrament this day. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, as you have put our sins to death in Christ's body on the tree, so bring life to our faith by his spirit, that in your continual grace we may bring forth the fruit of holy lives. Bless those who have re received calls, vicarages, and deaconess intern assignments this past week. Be with all confirmants, particularly those at grace, as the day of confirmation draws near for many in our churches. Use the Walk for Life in St. Petersburg and other locations around our nation to move the hearts of people to preserve life as a precious gift that it is. Be also with our day school staff as the time of our accreditation approaches. Lord, in your mercy. All these things and whatever else you know that we need, grant us, Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again and now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever. Amen. At this time, just a, a reminder that our collection plates are up front. You may bring your tithes and offerings up front as you come up for Holy Communion. With that, please rise. truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, and most especially are we bound to praise you on this day for the gl glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, the very Paschal Lamb, who was sacrificed for us and bore the sins of the world. And by his dying, he has destroyed death. And by his rising again, he has restored us to everlasting life. Therefore, with Mary Magdalene, Peter and John, with all the witnesses of the resurrection, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying.
remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. <coughs> what? On earth as it is. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night that he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take eat, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. The same way also he took the cup after supper, and after he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it all of you, this cup is the New Testament of my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Peace of the Lord be with you all. We share God's peace with those around us.
the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in body and soul to life everlasting. Depart in peace. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith towards you and in fervent love towards one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace.